Today I'm going to install this DIY Mr. Heater Portable Buddy Cubby that I built out of scrap material. It's going to go on the back side of this 5x5 box blind. I found that inside 5x5 is a little tight to have room to swivel around on a chair and not end up hitting your feet on the heater or being a little uncomfortably close to the heater at times. So I decided to build this little bump out box and I did it using mostly scrap material. I think actually it was all scrap material. So I'll, I'll first start by explaining the dimensions of the cubby box. So the sides are basically made out of end pieces of two by 12 that I used for deck stringers. So these are 16 inches uh, long on the high side, 14 inches long on the short side. And again, it's like 11 and a half inches wide or whatever it ends up being, um, you know, your basic uh, two by 12. And it's brown treat material. Probably doesn't have to be, but that's what I had in two by 12 lying around. So that's what I used. So the top is just basically half inch treated plywood. One could maybe wrap that with metal, but I figured the top of this treated plywood, if that lasts, you know, 20 years, 30 years, that's good enough. I could maybe come back and uh, put some put some waterproofing or paint or something on it if I come back to touch up the stand one day. But for now, the treated plywood is going to be fine. The treated plywood is about two inches wider than my two by twelve, so we're probably at thirteen and a half inches on the on the depth of that. And the width too is a little bit wider than the rest of it. I've got an inch overhang on each end here. The whole thing is basically twenty four inches wide from there to there. So that would make the top 26 inches wide, the top board there. So on top of that, I put this deck spindle on there so that I've got something to screw into from the inside. I did cut a little bit of an angle. I ran it through my table saw and, and took maybe a quarter inch off of one side so that it's got a little bit more of a flush face to it. And then the bottom, I did basically the same thing. I screwed on a, another deck spindle and I've got my screws ready to go in from the outside because this is actually gonna go in through to the rim joists on the stand. The top, I'm, not, I'm afraid I don't have anything there, so I'm gonna screw it from the inside. The bottom, I won't be able to do that because it's gonna be at floor, uh, floor level, so I'll be able to get it from the outside. The bottom is just a piece of plywood that's as wide as the two by 12 and 24 inches long. I did create a little cover for the hole if I take the heater out during the off season um, I can at least cover that hole up with a, just a simple piece of plywood that spins on a screw like that on the inside I took a couple pieces of leftover fascia material just metal fascia this is where you know most of the heat comes out of those heaters straight out or a little bit up so I decided to just as a safety measure line the top with metal so that it doesn't, uh, if it gets real hot, it doesn't, you know, it just maybe helps reduce a fire hazard. And I stuck it out here a little over a half an inch so that when I cut the hole in the wall, I can basically just tuck this right up. The plywood's gonna go right in behind there. So I've got kind of a nice little lip and a seal there for it. And then on the inside, I just used some chunks of carpet to line it so that it doesn't um, clunk and bang if I'm reaching in there and moving around or even when I ignite the heater it's maybe a little bit muffles the sound a little bit makes it a little bit quieter the whole thing probably could have been a little bit narrower but this leaves room if you use bottles you can stack a couple of bottles in along the side of it too or you know you just got room for other trinkets in there behind it or alongside of it so you could probably get by with making it a little a couple inches narrower so that you're using a 24 inch piece on top overall if you've got say a half a sheet of, of treated plywood laying around so it doesn't necessarily have to be quite this wide and then what i use for screws here on the top to put the top on i just use pole these are just like pole pole barn metal screws with the rubber ring around them they were i think maybe two inches long so i got a half a dozen of them seated in there on the back i just put just regular old Phillips head screws you know, that sink in there to hold the back on. I think I did pretty much pretty much the same with the bottom. I just ran a number of screws in there. 
on each side. So my first order of business on the deer blind is to cut a hole that's going to be basically the same size as the inside of my blind here. So I've got roughly 21 inches from this point to this point and then roughly 16 inches from here to there. So my hole in the deer blind wall is going to be 21 wide by 16 high and I'm going to cut the bottom right at, right at the floor level there uh, in the blind and then go up 16 inches from there. I'm up in the blind and I actually forgot that we had a plate here so I'm actually going to go from the top of the plate 16 inches up rather than flush with the floor. It won't change anything. Um, actually it'll just be you know basically the bottom of it will be elevated that two inches above is a rough cut so it'll just sit a couple inches higher than I thought. Other than that there really is no change. But before I start started banging around in here I decided to do a check for bees and Turns out there's a pretty good nest right there full of hornets or some kind of bees. And believe it or not, I'm glad I checked. I probably would have got stung. Believe it or not, I just brought a bottle of uh, soap water out here for usually for cleaning my plexiglass windows. I was going to clean the windows in here. And soap water actually works dang near as good as that bee killer. So... I'm gonna hit him with that before I start working here. Sticking my arm out that window and reaching up was a little too close for comfort. So I'm gonna go up the ladder and do it from around the corner. Okay, back to business. I'm ready to cut the hole. I decided to leave the carpet in here. I can just let the sawdust collect on that and then shake the whole thing out when I'm done. I forgot to capture this on video, but I also screwed a piece of three quarter inch scrap plywood on top of the plate and left it stick out the hole a little bit so that when I lift the cubby up from the outside, I can just slide it up until it hits that plywood and I know the cubby is as far up as I want it to go. You'll see this on the next shot outside of the blind. So now back inside, I'm going to make sure it's pulled tight when I, when I set these top three screws that are in there. I'm going to also put two screws down each side. Those are going to go into the meat of the, of the 2x12 that's out there. The top three are going to go into that deck spindle. And so now I'm ready to pull up the, the hose that I had poked through the hole, the small side of the hose. These are those filters. I don't use them. I use them and they cause problems. I haven't been using them for three years now and I haven't had a single problem with, with uh, my heaters since then. If you use the appropriate hose for the, the, for the approved hose for the heater, you shouldn't have any problem. If you're making your own out of rubber or whatever, the gas line or whatever on your own, this is where you're going to probably need it, but eventually it's just going to plug and give you trouble. So if you use the right hose right out of the gate, you're good to go.
And there it is, the finished install. We got the caulking done all the way around. Ended up running the actual, the correct hose for the buddy heater up through the base and then down to the tank on the ground. And I turn it on to test it out on the inside of the blind here. And I think we've got it. In fact, I pulled it out just enough. I can mount the little, the little stove fan on there. I did a video, I'll put a link in the, this, in the, in this video for that stove fan installation and also in the description, but it's cranking. And so now when I'm sitting here on my swivel chair, I can spin my feet around. I'm not hitting that heater. I got a good distance away. Heat's coming straight out at me. Fans moving the air a little. It's ready for hunting. Hey, I appreciate that you watched this video. If you're new to my channel, I've got lots of other helpful videos on uh, with ideas for DIY deer blinds. It helps my channel out if you like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one.